there's going to be a new type of law and order out there. I want to bring in my friend uh, uh, Steve Rogers. He's, he's in studio with us, and you've, submitted, you've had a career in law enforcement. A ruling like this, what kind of pressure does it put, not just nationally, but on local uh, lo local law enforcement, which already feels a serious strain. Charles, a tremendous amount of pressure. Look, the President Trump has always said from the beginning that his motive in writing the executive order was national security. And now, as one of our guests just said, the flow of uh, refugees and immigrants coming from these seven nations is going to increase rapidly. And Charles, I remember being on your show when ISIS said the fighters are coming. The war fighters are coming. What the Ninth Circuit Court just did was give the fighters a pathway to come into this country. Donald Trump, President Donald Trump, always was looking out for the American people. The motive wasn't a religious ban. It wasn't a religious test. It was national security. And I hope to God that he writes a new executive order, or at least Congress reacts. Uh, Ron, let me ask you this. We, the, the, the handicapping on this was two to one. Uh, the two, the two uh, j uh, judges who were appointed by Democrats, uh, 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 an affirmative, the one uh, against who was appointed by George W. Bush. Apparently, all three, it was a unanimous decision. Does that change the dynamics of this at all? Sure it does, and it's really because it was a narrow decision like we were talking earlier. It was really only addre addressing the issue of whether the stay should be overturned, not the constitutional nature of the executive order. And so that was the question at hand, is whether or not the stay should be overturned because there is eminent danger. And so what they're saying is that the government, the government didn't provide ample evidence that there is eminent danger that this ban would stop. And I'm a little bit surprised by that. I feel like if the Trump administration would put in a temporary ban like this, there would be eminent threats coming from those countries. And if those were indeed presented, and for the court to then say that those aren't eminent would be a little bit surprising. So it either means one of two things. It either means that the threats aren't all that imminent and that, that, that Trump is really just filling a campaign promise, or it means that this court was just ignoring real threats and that we are truly in danger. So it has to be one of those two things. In the meantime, Troy, uh, the, the, the appeals court says states offered, they did, the states themselves uh, offered evidence uh, that the temporary reinstatement of the ban would cause harm. So again, I, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're preparing for the next round of this, you have to feel pretty good if, you, if you're uh, uh, someone who opposes this, this temporary travel uh, moratorium, that, that you've got some new weapons and some new arrows in your quiver, if you will. Charles, can I say something about that? The case is going to go... The case is going to go back to Judge Robart's court, where there will be a full hearing on whether a, uh, an, an injunction should be ordered, which is what happens after the temporary restraining order. They're going for a full injunction. That's the states of Washington and Minnesota. And after that will be a full trial on the merits. And you can bet your bottom dollar that attorneys from the Department of Justice will be offering a full panoply of evidence of why this yeah. But is the deck stacked against them? Is the, the deck, does anyone believe, anyone on the panel believe that A, politics uh, is not, does not play a role in this, and B, that the, sta the deck is definitely stacked against the Trump administration going back to Judge Robarts? I think everyone agrees amen. on that, Joe, well, right? Well, look, the, the way it's that this was rolled out against the caused president. what's happening now. The way that this was rolled out caused what's happening now. Nobody disputes that the president has has statutory authority to pause refugees, period, regardless of which country, just pause all refugees. Nobody disputes that he can impose different vetting requirements for getting visas and other things like this if he's not satisfied with what's going on now. Nobody disputes that he can treat non-green card holders. People just want to come into the country and put uh, uh, certain restrictions in that way. But when you roll everything in and put this big thing that, that nobody even knew how to handle and create chaos in the airports, uh, that's where he got into trouble. Uh, plus all these atmospherics about sure. Muslim bans or whatever. But if he had just gone precision point by point and done these little administrative fixes, uh, that would have uh, changed this whole ballgame. Now I think you're right. Atmospherically, we're playing on sort of a different uh, uh, ballpark now. Hold on one second, guys. Let me bring in Rachel Campos Duffy. Uh, and, uh, you know, Rachel, we know that polls uh, show that Americans overwhelmingly approve of this temporary moratorium. Everyone thinks it's more or less common sense in the age of terrorism. Uh, so we know the White House, uh, their, their PR, public relations, May, may be a victory for them tonight, but the legal aspect of this and the authority of the president being undermined to this degree, to this degree has got to be worrisome. 
It is. And again, I think the Democrats are playing with fire here. God forbid um, something happens uh, where refugees, as your guest said, are, are might start flooding in. And if one of these terrorists infiltrates um, the refugee pol uh, population and something happens, boy, Democrats are going to be in a lot of trouble uh, with that. Uh, that said, uh, look, I mean, the Hold on one second. Let me just share. Rachel, I'm going to come right back Go to ahead. you, but I got to share the audience because President Trump it. tweeting, see you in court. The security of our nation is at stake. Go ahead, Rachel. Amen. Well, well, and, and, and that tweet's perfect timing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he's putting now the security of the country um, on the backs of the Democrats saying, hey, if something goes wrong, um, it's your fault in the interim until we get to court and solve this. But again, I, the American people are with the president on this, but he does have to take responsibility for the fact that it was handled um, in, in a way that was very ham-handed and sort of set him up for this. Uh, so I, I think that there, there's enough blame to go around, but this is the security of our country. This is no See, small I, matter. This if is, it is very right serious. Another order. Yes, but, if it is, then write yeah. another order. But no. I, I, I fundamentally yeah, disagree. No. Like, I agree that everything was rolled out very poorly, but that does not change the law and the fact that it was a lawful constitutional executive order. Now, it, the rollout was messy, but you know what? Any type, any time this rollout is going to happen, it's going to be messy. It could have gone a lot smoother, but that doesn't change the law. So by saying that the court was somehow justified uh, for this ruling because the rollout was messy, well, that to me doesn't make any sense if I'm a strict legal scholar. Joe, let me ask you, though, yeah, Joe. Joe, Charles, we, we Charles, agree. So we, I'm going to let you go, Joe, but I, I just want to also add, uh, throw this at you as well. I think we all know because we, we, we know that, you know, the, the, how the public feels and there's evidence to prove it. But could this now sway the public to feel differently? You know, could could the newspapers tomorrow say, hey, the, the court said it was unconstitutional. It was mean spirited. Could they layer it on so thick that even at the court of public opinion, that pendulum starts to swing the other way? Look, I, I think, Charles, this will help President Trump. He had history, the Constitution, and the law on his side, and I think this will help him with public opinion on his side. And I got to say this, even if the rollout were perfect, man, there would have been protest, there would have been legal challenges, because Donald Trump is proposing, has proposed, a major course correction. The opposition would have been all over him no matter what. Even if this were rolled out seamlessly, he's changing the paradigm, and there are people in this country who will refuse to accept it. We just heard from the Department of Justice. They say they are reviewing the decision and considering their options. Uh, we saw uh, today, uh, uh, Steve, uh, a, a situation where an, uh, someone who was here illegally for a long period of time uh, was deported, a public uproar out of this world, crazy. We know that, that these are gonna be scenes that are gonna be commonplace. So again, uh, this is a tricky area that we're going in because a lot of laws of America have not been enforced for a long time. And Charles, but I understand the other side to the story, and it's something that I think has been confirmed, that uh, this individual was arrested before, had some sort of a felony uh, conviction. Uh, President Trump has said that he's going to go after people with felony convictions first. And I've got to tell you, Charles, it's about national security, national security, protecting the American people. And what this court did uh, it's, it, I hope to God doesn't become catastrophic. It's going to have a, They're worried about chaos at the airports. How about chaos in our cities and towns across America if that decision creates a terrible situation here? You know, guys, we are mired in a, in a, in a listen, the American public voted for this. Uh, they did not like the direction of the country. Uh, they did not like the idea of waking up and finding out that a discotheque was blown up or people were mowed down, innocent folks in the street. Uh, Europe, we've seen the bloodbath that that's becoming, yet... Uh, this is going to be just a tooth and nail battle. And you got to wonder, uh, and Kelly, I'll ask you this. Now, let me ask you, Rachel, because I, I don't have you for much longer. Sure. Uh, is the GOP going to stand shoulder to shoulder with President Trump all the way through on this, do you think, even, as, even if the public relation tide turns? I, I think they are. Again, they know that he was elected um, saying that he was going to do extreme vetting. Again, this was not a ban. No matter what CNN or any of the press says, this was a pause, a 90 to 120 day pause to look at the vetting system that was in place by the Obama administration to see if it meets the standards of the Trump administration. And frankly, I have a lot of questions. Why are Christians um, being uh, banned from uh, refugee status? Why is there such a preponderance of Muslims uh, as opposed to, to Yazidis and Christians who are truly persecuted there. There's
there's a lot of questions people have um, about the vetting process. And it's, I mean, it se just seems sensible to say, let's take a pause. Let's take a look at 90 days. I think it's totally defensible for the Republicans um, uh, to, to go shoulder to shoulder, shoulder with him right. on this, because I think the American people understand that this is just common sense. I want to bring in a constitutional expert, John Eastman. John, uh, you helped us out earlier in the week uh, to, uh, with this case. Uh, now, now that the decision has been made, shockingly unanimous, I think no one saw that coming. Where do you see it playing out? How do you see it playing out from here? Well, it, it, it's anonymous, but nobody wanted to put their name on it. They issued it as a theorem opinion. And it, what's stunning, most stunning about it is they don't even cite the relevant statute that specifically gives the president the authority to do what he's done. I don't know how you can issue a ruling that says they're unlikely to succeed on the merits without citing the statute that specifically says he can do what he's done. It's really stunning to me. Um, where it goes from here, I, I assume to the Supreme Court of the United States, and hopefully they'll actually look at the law before they issue a ruling. So uh, the Justice Department says that it's, it's, it's reviewing the decision and it's, and it's considering options. Meanwhile, uh, a, a lot of folks on our panel, John, believe that the White House probably should just go ahead and rewrite the order, uh, you know, exclude all the loopholes, make sure it's a smooth execution, and that this all becomes a moot point. You think it goes away that easy? Well, no, no I don't, because what I think is going on here is a willful attempt. I mean, I, I used the word on your show the other day, a, a, a judicial coup. Uh, I, I think what we have is a lot of people in the judiciary who are joining forces with a, a, a concerted effort to deprive the American people of the results of the last election. This is not something that the president hid under the bushel barrel uh, when, when, when he was running for office. He was elected in large part because of his stance on immigration, and it included one of the things for in, in enhanced vetting of people coming to this country so we make sure you we can it. stop terrorists Thanks. or potential terrorists from yeah. coming in. Troy, um, another headline from, from uh, the, and they keep coming out, is that from the court, U.S. government has taken the position that we must not review its decisions at all. We disagree. Again, it sounds like, hey, uh, we do have authority here and we won't be, we won't be knocked around. The well, you know, Solicitor but, General sorry, of, sure. of Washington, the, the Solicitor General of Washington said exactly that. They're, they're taking from exactly from his playbook. He said that the Trump administration is inviting this court to abdicate their responsibility and the court should reject that invitation. But that's not what's going on here. They asked the uh, solicitor, they asked the Department of Justice attorney directly that, does this court have authority to review it? And, and the Justice Department said, in a limited way, um, I think that the, the president is, is sound here. And although we all agree that he's on sound constitutional and legal footing, one of the arguments from the other side is that if this was motivated purely by racial animus or religious animus, then it would violate the First Amendment. And I don't think that's been shown speaking, here. That argument is spurious, and that's why the president is going to ultimately prevail. Okay, speaking of the other side, folks, Bernie Sanders has issued a statement on the ruling. Uh, I'm going to read you a part of it. Hopefully the unanimous court ruling against President Trump's immigration ban will restore some of the damage he has done to our country's reputation around the world. It also may teach President Trump a lesson in American history and how our democracy is supposed to work here at home. Joe, I need your thoughts on that. Look, uh, Charles, I think this is a great opportunity for the president to respond in a bold a uh, respectful, calm, resolute manner. He has the American people on his side. I want him to be bold. I, I don't have a problem with him attacking a political court. He ought to. But he's got to pull Congress together and do whatever he can do to keep this on the front burner because the American people are behind him. Kelly, do you, do you like the idea of, of now roping in Congress and, and going at this in, in a way that Perhaps even, by, you know, this again, remember, this was a temporary uh, order in of itself, a, a temporary review of a system that obviously has flaws. Should they just go for the whole ball of wax right now uh, and, and try to bring in some new laws and, and really attack this in a way that perhaps the American people has been longing for for a long time? 
Well, I think that right now you have a White House that is aggressively pursuing its own agenda and a Congress that is, you know, pursuing its own agenda and that the communication mm -hmm. between the two needs to improve. So this could be that conduit of which of where the White House goes to the Hill and basically talks to these senators like Senator Cruz, who who supports this, Senator Portman, who's come out in support of this, and, and then and then can, to really start growing their relationship uh, together and communicating together. So I think that that would be a solid a solid start, uh, a good thing for them all to to, to to unify on. And to a previous to Bernie Sanders uh, statement, uh, it's ludicrous. There was a poll that came out uh, today or yesterday about the European countries actually agreeing with uh, Donald Trump's uh, executive immigration order and saying that it made a lot of sense uh, because they're going through this firsthand right now over in Europe and they understand what a security threat, uh, not proper vetting, can be. Troy, I want to ask you this um, uh, because I'm reading here from AP uh, that a, an appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court is possible but will put the decision in the hands of a divided court that, of course, we know has a vacancy. Neil Gorsuch could not be confirmed in time to take part in any consider in consideration of this case or the ban. Does that change uh, the uh, dynamics of how the White House their next move? Absolutely, because Justice Kennedy, who has control over the Ninth Circuit, could make the decision himself to reverse this Ninth Circuit decision, uh, or he could refer it to the whole court, which we know sits at only eight members. And if there's a four to four tie, that just affirms the lower court's decision. Or the Trump administration could ask the full Ninth Circuit to take the case on banc, which means ask the entire Ninth Circuit, some 27 judges, to review the case. John Eastman, uh, same question to you. Uh, if indeed this means uh, it would go to uh, a, a court uh, with, uh, with the possibility of a 4-4 tie, how does that change the, uh, the, the options for the Department of Justice and the, and the Trump White House? Well, there, there's, there's one other scenario. I, I don't think it'll play out because I don't think Justice Kennedy would do it, but he could. He's the circuit justice for the Ninth Circuit. An emergency appeal to stay this ruling going to Justice Kennedy could be decided by him. And if he puts a stay on the ruling, that effectively it, uh, restores uh, President Trump's executive order. And then, and then it would go to the full court if any other justice wanted to take it there, and it would split four to four there. And so Justice Kennedy's ruling would be the last word. But I've got to go back to this thing Senator uh, Bernie Sanders said. He said President Trump's now getting a lesson in American history about the role of the judiciary. Well, he needs to read the Constitution. The lower courts are, uh, exist at the will of Congress, and they can limit the jurisdiction of the federal courts. Section 1201 of Title VIII of U.S. Code has specifically said there shall be no means of judicial review on determination by the executive when they revoke somebody's visa. It does not get any clearer than that, that this court had no jurisdiction to handle, to address the due process concern, which is the basis of its holding here. And so what we've got is, like I said before, we've got a, a, a lawless judiciary that is striking down a perfectly valid and constitutional and, quite frankly, important executive order on national security. And yet, while we're having this the conversation, guys, I'm going to go to, uh, back to Steve here for a moment. Uh, the, you can argue the floodgates are, are, are opened. Uh, the enemy understands that there's a, a, a certain amount of time. It could be limited. It could be infinite. Who knows? But they know that the, the floodgates are open right now. How dangerous has, has the world become? How dangerous has America become in the last hour? In the last hour, it's become very dangerous. We've said all along, Charles, that we're at war. The Obama administration never admitted it. Uh, President Trump does admit it. And let me add this to Bernie Sanders. President Trump is teaching Bernie Sanders and the world today that we, the apology tour is over, that America is back, and we're going to look at for the best interest of the American people. This is what this is all about, our national security. Speaking of national security, I want to bring in Captain Chuck Nash. Captain Nash, we know the seven countries. Uh, it's, it's easy to understand uh, why we would want extreme vetting, uh, really deep vetting, even if it, it might not even be possible with, for some of these nations, particularly Syria. Absolutely. If there's no database that you can search, then how do you know what you're getting and who? Uh, it, it's just a total mess. These countries uh, have been lawless and, and without governments. Uh, some of them, if, if you look uh, at, at places like Yemen and Somalia, uh, they've been lawless and without governments for years. So then what do you make of this then? Uh, I mean, do you think the floodgates have opened up? Obviously, 
if you were someone who was prepared to come to this country to do harm, you know you better hop, hop on it right now. You've got an opportunity absolutely right now because uh, you can actually follow this through the courts. You don't have to run out and buy a ticket or apply for a visa tomorrow. You could probably wait a week or two because uh, this is going to be tied up in the courts and uh, you're going to throw lawyers at this thing. Uh, and it's it's pretty simple. I mean, you can you can read it. I've read it. It's it's and I'm not a lawyer. I didn't even stay at a Holiday Inn Express. And I'll tell you, it's very straightforward language. I don't know why we're having this with this jerking yeah. around. Well, guess what, guys? We are jerking around, and this is serious stuff. I'm going to come back at you, Joe, because I think I found the headline of all of the things, all the things that are coming out now. This is going to be the headline. You ready? And I want your thoughts. Yep. This is from the court. States have offered evidence of statements by president about his intent to implement a, quote, <laughs> Muslim ban. No problem. That's going to be the headlines tomorrow. All right, thanks. Bye -bye. Hey, Charles, that will be the headline, and that is pure political, because this is not a Muslim ban. So they've reached back on some things that Trump said during the campaign. Look, this is an opportunity for President Trump. I think he's got to take the long view, Charles, because the American people are with him. And every time Bernie Sanders and the left is out talking about this issue, it's a bad day for them. The American people are with President Trump on this issue. Kelly? I mean, how can you how can you determine intent? Uh, you, last week, when Sally Yates was fired for for bringing down for basically telling the Department of Justice to stop uh, issue, to stop honoring this executive order, uh, she did so based on Donald Trump's intent intent and whatever that might be. And that is something that, you know, Alan Dershowitz, Jonathan Turley, both came out and said that's a very, that's a very strange ruling that, the, you know, the DOJ and the court system, we've, that judges have basically not wanted to get into kind of the intent of something, but actually focus on the actual law. So whatever Julie, Rudy Giuliani said during the campaign, how, how can anyone take any of that seriously when, when there was an executive order and you're going through the court of law? Like, you don't know what was in Donald Trump's head. You don't know it was in Rudy Giuliani's head, but they came up with this executive order. It was completely lawful, and that's what it should be based on, not this bogus idea of intent that whoever can be interpreted whichever way you want to. And yet, Ilya, they're, they're saying that, uh, uh, that, they're, that, in their opinion, that the president had a Muslim ban in mind, and we know that that's going to carry today. I'm not sure what the next move is going to be, but this looks like perhaps the biggest obstacle now, uh, you know, the public intent. Uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the likelihood that they say that this order wouldn't have success if it went further through the uh, judicial food chain. I, I mean, right. they, the, the deck is stacked pretty high, but I think this Muslim ban part is going to be the story. Yeah, the, the problem is, as my, my good friend John said, that this whole thing is, uh, is written based on the due process clause of the Constitution rather than uh, analyzing the finer points of how I, I have the opinion in front of me, analyzing the finer points of the different parts of the immigration law. Because it's actually pretty complicated. And intent does matter to a certain extent in that if there's a pretext uh, that's not something that's pretty clear that... Uh, uh, the, the president's assertion doesn't pass the smell test. A court could go against him in that sense. Um, but uh, again, there's parts of what Donald Trump is trying to do, uh, most of it possibly, uh, that's, that, that's constitutional, that, that's legal. And you have to address the legal parts before you even get to the constitutional parts. But the way that, you know, we're only 10 days from when he signed this thing, right. it's ridiculous that courts are trying to issue these uh, solemn 29 page uh, opinions. We're sort of litigating uh, out of a hat. Uh, in, in a sense. So I think uh, everybody needs to calm down. And I, I, I really don't want to scare your viewers. I, I don't think that the floodgates have opened because you can't actually get on a plane to the U.S. unless you have a valid visa. So unless there was well, some problem with the vetting I, I, or something I gotta like that. I got to tell you, the uh, they're, they're scared. They're, they're yeah. upset and they're scared yeah. and they're frustrated. This yeah. is not what they voted for. They are very upset and they're going to be upset until they get the kind of conclusion on this that they thought they were getting. And I'm going to go back out to Peter Barnes. He's at the uh, he's in front of the Supreme Court. Peter, uh, you know, a lot of head scratching and a lot of people are very upset at this very moment. Yeah, and there's, of course, a lot of options that the parties in these uh, in the case can take. Uh, and one of them, as we've been talking about and, and listening to your legal panel, uh, it could come 
either either side could take this now to Justice Kennedy, who has uh, jurisdiction over the Ninth Circuit. That 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 geography of the country is under his jurisdiction. He has options on what he could do with it. He could uphold that decision by uh, the appeals court. He could uh, he could overrule that, put a stay on the stay, as <laughs> as I heard one of your panelists uh, saying. Basically, the Justice Department only has a one line statement, which is the ju uh, the Justice Department is reviewing the decision as con and is considering its options declined further comment we did see that tweet from president trump who said see you in court our national security uh, is at stake it sounds like it, he is itching uh, to take this perhaps here tonight charles we'll, we'll find out uh, shortly uh, by the way also shortly we're going to hear from the uh, washington state attorney attorney general uh, uh, bob ferguson so please stay tuned for that Real quick, Troy, I've got to ask you about this line because I just it just stands out of all of the shocking aspects of this. The courts uh, saying that states have offered evidence of statements by president about his intent to implement a Muslim ban. Will that haunt even a rewrite of this executive order? It shouldn't because it's it's hearsay upon hearsay, which is should not be admissible in court. Any out of court statement being offered for its truth is hearsay. And to say that um, somebody said that Rudy, Rudy Giuliani said that President Trump said that this is uh, for to ban Muslims is hearsay upon hearsay upon hearsay. It should not be considered. And the due process argument should also not be considered because the United States Supreme Court said that the only due process that is afforded foreign aliens is that which the Congress gives them. And in this case, it's none. John Eastman, let me have your quick opinion on that, please. Do we have John? Yes. Yeah, yeah. President Trump said when he made those comments, and everybody understood him to be saying, is we've got to put a stop to radical Islamists coming to this country to try and commit acts of terror against our citizens. Uh, so, so when he said Muslim ban, I think what he meant was a radical Islam jihadist ban. And we've targeted the seven countries that President Obama himself said have become hotbeds of such terrorism. Uh, that's why we put a hold, a temporary hold, to make sure we've got the ability to vet these people to prevent terrorists coming in. This is so clearly within the president's authority. In fact, it's not just the power he has, it's a duty that he right. has right. To, to, to take an action here. Uh, yes. it, it, again, you know, the, 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 the courts are way out on the deep end here, but the narrative that will be put out if President Trump tries to fight back is that he's being lawless rather than the courts are being lawless. Well, there's no doubt about that. Let me go real quick to, to, to Kelly Riddell. Kelly Riddell, uh, seven nations, uh, you got 40 more that are predominantly Muslim nations in this country, in this world rather, including Indonesia with the largest in, uh, uh, Muslim population, India with the second, soon to be the first largest uh, Muslim population, Saudi Arabia and uh, many others. So yeah. the notion that this is a strictly a Muslim ban, even when Christians have been sent back yeah. uh, at the initial rollout, seems to be somewhat far-fetched. It is far-fetched. You'd have to add 40-plus other countries in order to make this a Muslim ban. Look at these seven countries are failed nation-states, with the exception of Iran. So they don't have a central government. There's not U.S. embassies there. There's no, way, there's no one to process passports. It's a, very, it's a very reasonable and rational, and I think most Americans agree, that, yeah, let's take 90 days a timeout and figure out how we are going to vet these refugees yeah. coming from these countries. It's a it's a terribly it's a common sense. And this is the reason why people let me wrap this up, Donald guys, uh, for the audience. A unanimous decision that su surprised a few people. Uh, the Democrats are leaping all over that. Nancy Pelosi issuing a statement on the unanimous appeal, uh, saying that the administration was reckless and that they've done significant harm to families by undermining our fight against terror. Of course, the majority of Americans don't agree with that. They think smart vetting would keep America. But the second rule is.